Welcome back, MTG Joe here, and we're going to be featuring another Caldime Standard Deck Tech. Uh, as I mentioned in my other videos, I will be participating in the Streamer Early Access event on January 27th. Myself and a bunch of other great streamers get a God account a day early compared to the general public with all the cards in Caldime. We get to play for the day before we have to pay for our own cards. Um, so it's a really fun event. I've done it for about the last year. Uh, we get to try out a bunch of different brews, have some fun. It is all best of one format. So what I like to do is put together a bunch of deck lists, uh, kind of ideas, themes that I want to try out um, before the set releases. Um, so what we have here is Snow Tie Zombies. Uh, so uh, basically a Saltai Zombie Snow Tribal deck. Um, before we jump into the deck itself, as always, if you can, uh, if you're catching this on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. And if you want to know when we go live with this deck during the early streamer event and any other decks for Kaldheim, uh, you can always follow on Twitch. So jumping into it with Kaldheim, there is a bunch of zombie synergies and snow. Snow is basically, you have basic lands that have the subtype as snow. So you have snow covered swamps, forests, mountains, plains, islands. Um, and then you have snow creatures and there's certain synergies or interactions um, that pair with the snow. And kind of the main card and one of the cooler cards from the set, in my opinion, is Jorn, God of Winter. It is a modular dual face, so it's a legendary snow creature god, and then its flip side is a legendary snow artifact. So on its face side, it's a three mana, three, three, legendary creature. Whenever Jorn attacks, untap each snow permanent you control. Notably, it untaps all your snow lands as well. So you can effectively, in your main phase, play something, attack with Jorn, and then untap your snow artifacts. If you cast its artifact side, uh, you get a three mana artifact that lets you uh, play basically snow permanents from your graveyard this turn. Um, if you do, they enter the battlefield tap. Notably speaking, it says play not cast, so you can play your lands from the graveyard as well. Um, so we have kind of a self-mill theme. Uh, that we'll kind of look at with some of the other cards in the deck. Um, but I'm really excited about this card because um, you can play both sides. It eliminates some of the issues when you play four of a certain legendary um, because we can play Jorn as a creature and then uh, call during the Rhyme Staff as an artifact and then synergize between the two. Uh, you can tap the uh, Rhyme Staff, play something from your graveyard, attack with Jorn, attack, untap all your lands, and then the uh, Rhyme Staff as well, and then play something else from the Graveyard. So it's kind of cool like that. I'm really excited to try out this card. I think it's going to be really powerful. Uh, then we have Narfi Betrayer King. Uh, this is probably the coolest art in the set. Looks like a band shirt I would have had uh, back in the day. Um, so this is a 5 mana 4-3 Zombie Snow Lord. Um, so this makes our other snow and zombie creatures plus 1-1. One, one. Um, and then for three snow mana, doesn't matter what color, you can return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tap. This can be done at instant speed. So end of your opponent's turn, if it's in the graveyard, boom, you get your lord back. Um, then we have Draugr Necromancer. Uh, so this is a four mana, four, four. If a non-token creature an opponent controls would die, exile that card with an ice counter on it. And then you can cast cards um, basically with those ice counters pay your mana whatever color you want um so this should stack as long as it has a nice counter remains exiled so even if you get other ones or you recast it from the graveyard after you get that same value notably as well this is a zombie so it gets the, the pump up um so then we have avalanche caller so um notably there is what we're not including in this deck is that one mana uh pay snow to level it up um I think it's a little bit of a trap. There's so much removal, especially black-based removal in the format, that you spend all this time and mana building it up, and then it just gets killed. So we want to play more synergy, kind of leverage the graveyard, value engine, salt eye deck. Um, and I think Avalanche Caller is a really cool card. So it's a two mana, one three, so it blocks early pretty well. It gets a bonus because it is a snow creature. And then for two mana, uh, any color, you get to make any of your lands a four four elemental with hexproof and haste. Um, and it's still a land, so it can't be bounced by like Brazen Borrower. And this is really cool because what you can do is basically late game or with Jorn, pay some mana, make your lands, creatures, attack with them, then Jorn untaps them, 
or just like late game you just use a big mana sink they're four four elementals so good early as a blocker good even better late game when you could just create an army with it so it's kind of a win condition in itself um, the elementals are not snow related so they don't get the bonus um, then there's frost auger this is a one mana one two and basically this is kind of our value engine in the early game you can pay a snow mana and tap it um, reveal look at the top card of your library if it's a snow card you get to put it in your hand so you get to draw a bunch of cards and stuff like that ideally with it and then finally one card i wanted to try out it's a one of it's egan god of death and then throne of death is the flip side so similar to jorn this is god and an, uh, an artifact it's god side is actually not as much what i'm interested in i'm actually more interested in the throne side um, but the god side is a six uh, six six for three mana with death touch uh, the downside is at the beginning of your upkeep you have to exile two cards from your graveyard if you can't you have to sacrifice egan and draw a card um, i'm actually interested in the mill side as i mentioned we are a self mill deck we want to get cards into our graveyard to bring back um, so throne of death basically mills you at the beginning of your upkeep and then if you need to you can pay three mana to exile a creature card from your graveyard and draw a card so kind of cool synergy there now the zombie support from existing sets uh, there's a lot of incidental zombies that all kind of play with our theme uh, we have mire Triton that's been used in a lot of like the rakdos self mill decks uh, two mana two one zombie merfolk with death touch so it trades up in value gains you life and mills you two cards really just what we want to do here um, you get to put cards in your graveyard hopefully find them and bring them back later um, in terms of removal uh, we have a zombie that's also removal murderous rider it's a zombie it's a knight it's lifelink it kills planeswalkers or creatures, kind of does everything we want in this shell. And then another card that coincidentally is a zombie, Pelucranos Unchained. Um, we're self-milling, so naturally we have fuel for it to be escaped. We can cast it from our graveyard even without Jorn. Um, it's a fight spell as well. Uh, if we run into any rogue players, we still have that as an escape threat in the main board. Um, we also have four Timeret Calls of the Dead, another way card that you've seen in the Rakdos mid-range list in current standard. Uh, mills you three cards twice and then creates zombie tokens as well uh, it's third chapter is extra bonus in our deck because beyond the zombie tokens we are able to have other zombies so we get that value out of it as well um, and then kind of just moving into the remaining spells and lands themselves um, right now i'm going with heartless act that might be better served as eliminate or blood chief's thirst um, we really need to see what the creatures and the metas are like uh, before we're able to really refine our our list in a kind of blind meta i'll just play heartless axe hopefully we don't run into like green counters stuff like that uh, because we are a self mill deck we are playing a couple of agadim's awakening as our modular dual land uh, this can be used as land early and late game we can bring back a bunch of stuff from our graveyard and then we have uh, zayoth trium or tri land uh, we have a couple pathways and then um a bunch of snow lands so we're not playing the full set of uh, 12 pathways uh, the decks predominantly uh, i think green black with a splash of blue if i'm mistaken or no black blue with a splash of green um and then we're just playing uh, 11 snow covered lands so some swamps islands and then two forests as well so that's pretty much the deck um I'm actually really excited to try this one out. I think Jorn is really sweet. It's one of my cool, like one of my favorite cards from this set. Um, and I usually enjoy uh, self mill strategies. Uh, one of my favorite EGH decks was Tasker. Um, similar concept with the self mill. Um, so we're definitely going to try this out, see how it goes on early streamer event. Um, if you do have any suggestions for decks you'd like to see, I'm putting out a bunch more on my Aether Hub. I'm going to try to do as many of these video deck decks as possible. But if you just want the deck list themselves, pop over there. I did like blue-white flyers, blue-white control, um, there's a red-white warriors, uh, there's quite a few other deck lists that I'm kind of po popping in there as I get some time, um, but hopefully see you for early streamer event. Uh, if you do have any decks you'd like to see as well, do drop a comment. I'll try to feature as many decks as I can during that event. I'll be streaming usually for about nine hours, so drop a list if I can get a chance to play it, I definitely will. Um, otherwise, I appreciate all the support as always. Thanks for watching, have a safe one out there, and uh, catch you next time.